Welcome Dr. Phil McGraw, everybody. Well, welcome. Very nice to see you. What's happening? Well, you know, I was actually just looking at your set there. That looks fantastic, that new set. Yeah, you know, we spend every summer reinventing ourselves for the next year. What can we do better to bring information to the people? And one of the things that I just felt like is we've got to react to the big stories that break in America. And we're not going to try to be the 4 o'clock news. I'm going to deal with these from the standpoint of what does it mean to the viewer. Right. I mean, if, if it's something... Uh, we use Virginia Tech tragedy as an example. You know, people are wondering, gosh, what's a paranoid schizophrenic? My uncle's supposedly paranoid schizophrenic. I need to be afraid of him. What do I tell my kids that are going to school? How does this affect me? That's the way we're going to be doing those stories. And uh, anything that has an effect on the viewer and they want to know what it means, how to deal with it, what to say to their children, whatever, we're going to do that story. And you need to have a big... Yeah, yeah, no, no, absolutely. <clears throat> you need to... Uh... I like you. You need to have the, the big set to do it. Because if I said that to, to CBS to say I want to do all that, they'd say, "Well, you can do that with the old set." Yeah. Well. Yeah. But, but we didn't think so. All but, right. Well, you know, we're we're actually you know we're now hooked into the biggest news service in the world. We've got like uh, 10, 11 different satellite lines coming in and going out so we can talk to people all over the world, instantaneous, we're prepared to go live, we're prepared to shoot at midnight, whatever it happens, we're gonna deal with it. So. Now, are you, are you, uh, are you gonna be <coughs> live then? The show's gonna be live all the time? Necessary, when it's wow. necessary it will be. Now we still have our regular sets. Yeah, what are you, you gonna do this see. year? You're gonna do, uh, what about uh, the, the usual staple stuff, you know, the addictions and the, uh, you know, crazy folks? It's not usual. <laughs> It's not usual staple Wait, it, stuff it, and crazy folks. These are interesting show, human yeah. interest stories. Yeah, yeah, and you got a lot of crazy folks there too. Yeah. Yeah. No, they got some, some we, crazy people there. We too. have some that are a little. Crazy. A little d unique in the way they unique. look at life. Yeah, yeah, no, it's good. I like the way you handle them as well. You're not dismissive of them because sometimes I, you know, I watch a show and I and I see the folks on it and I think, you know, they just need a smack. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, my my wife has made me promise that the last year I'm on, I'm going to move to cable, yeah. and say what I'm really thinking. Yeah. <laughs> And, uh, and, uh, no, yeah, it'd yeah, have yeah. to be the final season. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, you've no. never lost your temper, though. I've never seen you actually lose your temper on, on well, someone, have you? No, that's because I edit the shows. Ah! <laughs> no, that's I, I very don't. That's smart. No, I don't, I don't lose my temper about it, but I mean, I, I'm pretty straight with them about it. I mean, You're you, straight? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> don't be so nah, disappointed. No, I, <laughs> I know, you know, that, I know that breaks ask... your heart. Yeah, it does, actually. I kind of like... <laughs> to ask you about you're a pilot right you do the private you're a private pilot you yes. fly around you see you know i because i've talked to you about this before i'm terrified of flying i've been taking flying lessons to try and combat my fear how about that oh my that? god thanks yeah. for the warning yeah i'm just saying <laughs> so you're you haven't soloed i haven't soloed yet well okay. not in a plane yeah <laughs> You're back to the previous I'm talking about the earlier on thing yeah. now. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. No, so you, you're actually flying like a I'm Cessna? I'm flying like a Cessna 172. I go up there and I'm kind of... Other pilots are like, oh, uh, yeah. Well, it's, that'll get you over your fear. But No, I've been a pilot since I was 16. Really? Do you have, yeah. own, do you have a little plane? Do you have a little um, plane fly around? There? I have a plane, yeah. Really? Yeah. And you fly it places? No, I don't. Oh, right. Uh, I have pilots that fly it. I don't fly myself anymore, but I still have my pilot's license. You, you do? How long did it, is, is it, did it take you a long time to get it? Because it seems to me like I've been working at this for a long time. I I've got it, eight it, hours I've been doing this. <laughs> eight hours in the plane. Yeah. How long is it going to take? Well, I mean, that's outrageous to turn somebody loose in a $10,000 missile over a civilized populated area. I can't imagine. I don't, I don't fly planes worth $10,000. Are you crazy? <laughs> no, no. They, they, uh, it takes, it took me like a month. It takes people, you got to have like, 40, 50, 60 hours. Yeah, yeah, that's you right. You got eight, yeah. so you're on the way, but you'll, you'll solo soon. Where it, they, I, they just I'll pull up, get out, and turn tonight. you loose. I'll solo tonight. Yeah. yeah. So are you going to fly tonight? No, no, I'll no, solo tonight. tonight. I, <laughs> thanks for that. We we should go into vaudeville together. You know, I. Do you think that's the way to combat your fears? Though you're Doctor Phil, right? That's the I'm doing the right thing. Like run up to your fear and look at it right in the eye. That's the way to do it, isn't it? That's one way. 
Which the other way? I'd rather do it the other way because this way's terrifying. <laughs> Drive. Drive. <laughs> I mean, it takes, but it's the whole thing about, you know, I, it's something I have to do in my life. No, I, listen, I, I think that one of the best things you can do is understand it. You get out there and fly around, you'll understand. that You get on airliners, you don't like it, but you do it, right? Oh, sure, all the time. And you are much safer in a small plane than you are on an airliner. Oh, thanks very much for that. I mean, it's true. <laughs> really? It's true. You can glide and land anywhere in one of those planes. I've done it several times. Really? Did you run out of gas? Well, sort of. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. That's a common one, isn't it? People raise yeah. like, yeah, yeah I know. mean, the mechanical things do break, so yeah, yeah. I mean, you got to be prepared to go down what, in what a fiery ball. What are you afraid ball. of? What, what frightens you? Oh, wacky interviews. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> You're not frightened of anything like yeah. that. I can't imagine you'd be no, frightened of much. The only thing that ever that uh, I would have to say that I have a, a genuine fear of is something happening to one of my children. Well, of course, I think I'm I mean, that's the thing, because yeah, yeah. you feel powerless, you know, it's just, Terrifying. your kids are out there, they're driving, uh, my son Jay is a pilot, um, and so is I... Is he a psychotherapist as well, your son? No, no. He's, he's a lawyer. He's a lawyer. Oh. But he does oh, Congratulations. No, no, no. Yeah. no. Ah, you could probably retire now. No, we put him in rehab and got him... Yeah, yeah, get it, get it done early, that's no, he does. He doesn't practice law, uh, he's actually in television, he, he produces. And, um, but you, you worry about your kids. That's the thing where you're, the time, you feel yeah. powerless. And I've often said if something happened to one of my kids, uh, you just have to take me to the dump. I mean, yeah, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I and know. when I have people on the show um, that have lost a, a child early, uh, I, I mean, I'm just... Worst thing that can uh, happen to a I, person. I mean, yeah. I have a hard time talking to them. I have a hard time... Uh, discussing it. You're, cha you're making a little bit of a change in the show this year, apart from the set thing. You're going to actually talk a little bit more about the celebrity culture, right? Because you haven't talked about... Because I was going to talk to you about the Britney Spears thing and, uh, you know, the, all of that, these kind of actresses and singers that are crashing and burning. Are you going to look at that? Well, you know, we are, and I'll tell you why. We, those things can seem so trivial and it's so tabloid and so paparazzi driven all of those things seem like why would you spend time on that and I'll tell you why I will spend time on it these are the role models for our viewers daughters our viewers children they want to dress like them act like them wear their hair like them they buy their movies they their, their music they go to their movies and then you see these these people melt down Again, what do you say to your kids about that? I mean, you don't want them saying, oh, look how glamorous that is. In and out of clubs every night, drunk, and it just gets more and more attention. They seem like the most popular kids in school. Right. And so people want to emulate that. Parents want to know, what do we say to our kids when the role models and icons self-destruct? So we will deal with it from that standpoint. What, what do you say? What do you say? Well, I think you've got to redirect them. I mean, when, when you're looking at these, and of course, the idea in Hollywood is go out and get incredibly stupid, do incredibly stupid things, and then run to rehab, and everything's okay. Yeah, that's right. Rehab is going to get And rehab jail card, is yeah. usually spelled S-P-A. You know, they just go into yeah. a spa, you know, they lay around the pool for a while, get a little bit of talking therapy, and then they go back out. But the failure rate for people that go to rehab is like 85%. Yeah. yeah. That's for people that actually go to a decent rehab facility. So, I mean, alcoholism and drug addiction, it is a serious disease. It's very complex, it's resistant to treatment, it's subject to relapse. So we haven't seen the end of this, but you know, you, you see things where, uh, like Lane Garrison, where somebody actually gets killed. And I just have to tell you, when I look at Brittany and Lindsay and all these people doing this stuff, I'm sorry, it just ain't cute anymore. No, no, I, I, I totally just, agree I, with I don't you. think it's cute anymore, I'm sick to death of it. And uh, I think they need to shut up, sit down, stay home. I think they Stay home and be a good one. Stay home and be a good one. Well, I always feel when you're on the show, we just don't have enough time. Will you come back sooner the next time? We never have enough time when you're here. We're out of time again. I don't know. Oh, let's go up in an airplane together. Yeah, we could do that. Yeah. <laughs> long as I'm the one with my hands that's on the control. Right, that's right, that's right. Dr. Fell, Listen. everybody. We'll be right back. Thanks so much. My, my first guest tonight. Let's play a game and see if you can guess who my first guest is tonight. He's the host of the daytime show, Dr. Phil. <laughs> It's now in its 11th season. That's right, everyone. Dr. Phil McGraw, everybody. Phil McGraw. How are you doing, Tex? 
Alex, you good? Well, I'm all right. How about you? Well, I'm all right, I guess. I don't know. I don't want to give too much information away unless you, uh, you know, in case you, you know. Um... I was actually feeling pretty good about coming out here till I watched the first part of the show. What the hell, man? What are you talking about? It's great. Well, you basically said you don't have to be uh -oh. to get on here. <laughs> ah. Did I hear that right? Yeah, we, we'll cut that bit out, though, Doc. That's, that's yeah. not a bit that we want. It's just what I was... I was trying to make the folks at home feel like it was like your show. That if you've got a problem, you can come on the show and discuss it. Yeah. Yeah. And, and all of these people over here, they were at my show this afternoon. No! Yeah. Is that true? What the hell? Yeah. We sent them to lunch. Why you sent them to... Man, you're ruining everything. I know. Oh, and the rest of y'all... We sent them to lunch, so we sent the entire audience with them. I just wanted to say. Yeah, 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 yeah. Go ahead and applaud, because you ain't going to lunch. <laughs> How you doing? What you got on the show this year? Anything exciting? Nah. Nah, good. Thank goodness for that. Well, yeah, I mean, but you, you do bring the people in, and you actually do the work with them on the stage. We so. do. We yeah. ask them questions about what's going on in their life to figure it out. Like... I've got a couple questions for you, actually. All right. This then. is really interesting to me. Now, you're actually, you've lost a lot of weight. I have, you, yeah. You yeah. feel good? Yeah, I do. Yeah, I feel a little better. You yeah. look great. Thank actually. you very much indeed. You want to make out? Breaks my jaw. Yeah. Breaks my jaw to say that. Yeah, but you really do come look on good. now. But you're like 50. Uh, I'm, I'm 50. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I like to think I'm like 35, yeah. but I'm actually 50. Yeah. And you've got a 20 month old baby. How does that work? Well, when a man loves a lady... Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> I got that part, but I've got a grandkid that'll mm. come over, and we have a great time for, like, the afternoon. Yeah. And then I'm exhausted, and so I send them back home. Yeah. And I go fall asleep in my chair. You don't do that. You have them 24-7. Yeah. Doesn't that wear you out at this age? No, I, I just send them to someone else's kids. Okay, well... Yeah. That's right. I just go, hey, you're about the right age to have a kid. Now, look after this one but for a little while. Big, but you're a big TV star, so you can afford staff and names. Yeah, that's and right. You're like that, my right? wife has staff around the house. Yeah. You kidding me? You want to see the staff in my house? Hey, yeah. hi. Doesn't it wear you out? How do you get all this energy? You come out here and you're like totally frenetic. Well, I, you know, I'm neat. You're like one half of a bipolar. You're always manic. <laughs> But, you know, the truth is, I look after myself, I eat my vegetables, and I practice self-love. They're not enough. They're, 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 <laughs> there is not that much broccoli. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the thing is, I had, I had my kids later on because yeah, I was so crazy when I was younger that it would have been a very bad idea. As opposed to now. Oh, no. Uh, this, is, like, this is me. Like, this is my Cronkite This is your years. mellow. I, I, this is your yeah, mellow. Yeah. This is mellow, Craig? Yeah. Gee, man. Yeah, yeah, when I was drinking, it was, well, didn't you have a time when you were, like, really crazy, Dr. Phil? When you were just, like, crazy, Phil? Compared to this? To you? What the hell, man? I'm just, I dance with my horse. I dance with my network executive. I talk to my gay robot skeleton. Yeah, but you know... <laughs> If you host a late night talk show with a gay robot and a horse, it's time to reevaluate your situation. <laughs> what the hell, man? Are, uh, are you free in the afternoon? <laughs> yeah, man. Let's uh, let's talk after. Yeah, we'll have to talk about that. It's funny when you turned on him. I got the feeling it was like a, it was like a tank turning. It was like the sights were just going. I thought, oh, oh, he's in trouble. Are you still flying airplanes? I know you're a pilot. No, I, you know I don't fly much anymore because I got. I have to tell you, when you work all day and then you say, okay, I want to go home, so you go fly yourself home. Yeah. I remember one time passing Houston. And then I don't remember anything until I was passing Dallas. Ooh. And I thought, did I go to sleep? Or was I like in a trance? Or what? And that was the last time I said, all right, that's it. Yeah. Autopilot. or Because no, you, you know how the plane vibrates. Yeah, you got to yeah, get yeah. real easy. But you started flying, right? Yeah, yeah. No, I, I got a pilot's license. But I, I don't fly myself around. I don't trust me. In fact, I don't get in the plane unless someone else is flying it. What did you... So... Did you get a passenger license? What do you mean you don't? Kind of. 
No, I got my pilot's license, but I don't like to go on the plane unless there's a better pilot in the plane than me. I don't, I don't fly my own unless it's for currency or, you know, you know, getting stuff up. I don't, you know, I don't mean I fly for currency like I take money. Right. You know, you know what I'm talking about. You're a pilot. I mean, right. it's like to build yeah, your you hours. You have to keep stuff. your hours up. Right. And all right. That right. Kind but of I, stuff. I tend to fly with better pilots than me. I didn't start flying until I was 45. Yeah. You know. So, so what I go are you for flying? You uh, mean airplanes? Like, you know, I mean, like fly a Cessna? Yeah, I had a little side of Cessna 182 for a while, but I don't have okay. one right now. I, what okay. I want is one of them old Concords, but they're pretty expensive. Yeah, that's true. And you can't land them just anywhere. I can. Yeah. Yeah. That's a problem. You ever, you ever get into a, a problem with the airplane? Well, I've had a few times that I didn't exactly land on an airport, and that's not good. <laughs> that's not good. That yeah. also contributed to my deciding to let somebody else yeah. be a flight. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. The people like it when you land on an yeah, airport the, or near, yeah, far, near the airport. You know, farmers don't like that. They work on those crops and then you mow them down. They don't like that. Well, as long as you go in the direction of the crop. Yeah, if well, you go across the, then, I, no, I've had them had to come take the wings off of it, put it on a, put it on a truck and take it back to you the You ran airport. out of gas, didn't you? Sort of. Yeah. <laughs> what would you fly? Well, sort of. I was, uh, I was in a plane. Yeah. <laughs> That it can worked happen. for you. It worked for you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, once my first solo flight uh, over <clears> the <throat> San Gabriel Mountains, I was about halfway over and I thought, this is the worst idea I ever had in my entire life. This is terrible. Do you, do you never think that when you're in a plane on your well, own? Well, on your first solo flight, you flew over the mountains? Well, my first, you know, away from they the were trying to get a what? They were trying to get rid of you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because listen, they don't do that on the first flight. Well, it's the San Gabriels. They're about, you know, yeah. 40 feet. You know, uh, yeah, but still, yeah, nonetheless. Yeah. No, they get up there, actually. Yeah, scared. nonetheless. Yeah. Anyway, we're out of time. You want some fruit? Uh, no, thank you. <laughs> Listen, you want some fruit? I do. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right, look at this. Now, what we, I drew a face on uh, one of the pieces of fruit, but it's still clean. You can still eat it. I feel good about that. All right. Um, here, I tell you what, um, hold these for a minute, would you, doctor? Thanks. <clears throat> Why do I feel like somebody just slipped up and wrote stupid on my forehead? <laughs> Come on, that's not true. Do you, you want any of this? Because uh, it's all uh, reasonably priced. It's all reasonably priced. Yeah. Did you get this out of your garden? No. Where'd you get it? CBS Garden. And why am I holding this? Is this getting ready to blow up? Or have you been doing something really unnatural with these? <laughs> It's just a bit, you know, I'm just, I'm trying to figure, you know how, like, you end a segment on the show, I'm like, well, I don't know how to end this, so uh, I just say, you want some fruit or an awkward pause, you want to, you, 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 like, we're done, you know? I would go, I would go with the awkward pause. All right, let's do an awkward pause involving fruit. Okay. All right, you ready? We have to take a commercial break. Uh, you want to? Uh, you want to do the commercial break thing? Yeah, I think I'll do a little uh, Doctor Phil type thing here. Well, Doctor Phil, he's, he's, he's my he's my first guest. Yeah. You, you'll be on after the commercial. Yeah, break. I want to go out with a little Doctor Phil. Well, you're going to do an impression of Doctor yeah, Phil. So. Yet he's here. He might be backstage and hear it. I'm dead and have no fear. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, then go. Do the thing. Go, go to the... Ladies and gentlemen, the late Jeffrey Peterson as Dr. Phil. Ask yourself, are you hosting this show because you want to or because you can't remember how to get out of the friggin' building? 